Oh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to my review slash analysis of XGL and comps on Ubuntu Linux. Uh, this is what you have here in front of you is a Dell Inspiron 9400 laptop. A uh, little overview of the hardware so you know what this will be running on. It does have the Intel Core Duo 1.83 GHz processor, 1 GB of RAM, and the NVIDIA GeForce 7800 Go GPU with 256 megs of RAM on that. So uh, some pretty decent hardware that we're going to be running this on today. So uh, that you know shouldn't be a problem that way at least. Um, this is a fresh installation of Ubuntu. Uh, it's about as stock and normal as it gets aside from some additional drivers installed for the wireless and uh, the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. That way we get the best performance possible out of um, XGL and comps. So aside from that, it's pretty much just a straight up installation of Ubuntu. Um, 6.0 Zero five, I think, which is a uh, Drapper Drake, and let's just go ahead and look at a couple things. Uh, first of all, at this time, XGL is running, but Comps is not. So everything you see is going to look and feel just like normal everyday genome under Ubuntu. I want to just show you a couple things that way you get a feel for how they normally are. You know, just kind of moving the windows around. There we got we got Dig up here in Firefox with a uh, like Mebo or my personal website with obviously I don't have the Macromedia Flash plugin installed. So everything kind of just running nice and normal. Coming in here through the dig articles and whatnot, nice and good. Over here on top, you can see that both CPUs aren't getting used very much. You know, Firefox is using a bit there as it renders, but once it's done rendering, those will drop back down to just a couple percent each, which is pretty normal. Of course, with um, Linux and uh, most any of the window managers, we've had something similar to places, a, or um, as we call them, little virtual desktops that we can flip through really easy here. So, come in here, have one that has, you know, Disk Manager and GIMP and OpenOffice open, or come here, we can be watching a copy of The Beautiful Mind or doing some file management, and come here and we have a little bit of a better overview of CPU performance where we can actually get it um, uh, in a graphical view there, giving you a chance to really kind of see how things are, and I see them. My lovely reflective True Byte screen is showing me a little bit in the window there, so hopefully that's not too distracting. But again, just as you know, as we move things, you know, very kind of static and how it moves and, and moves around or uh, switches between windows. Um, nothing too much there, and, and the uh, virtual window switching is you know very cut and you know clean cut and how it happens and doesn't take much. Have a couple of CPU spikes with some of those things, uh, but not too much. Now, of course, what everyone's here for is to see comps and XGL running. So, got a little script we're gonna run. All right, now welcome to XGL and Comps. Again, right off the bat, nothing really looks changed. There's a little bit of shading going on uh, in the top two or the title bars of each of the windows, but beyond that, everything really looks basically the same. All the changes occur when we actually start doing things. Simple things like just bringing down a menu. You notice they have a little bit of a buoyancy to them, as well as a little bit of a fade in and fade out effect, giving it a, a nice, pleasant view on the eye, uh, making it change it up a little bit from the start, just on and off uh, with no transparencies that we see all day long um, in a non 3D accelerated window manager. So it's, it's a nice little touch. Come here into our window, and again, you know, just can flip between our tabs just as we normally would and scroll up and down them just like, you know, absolutely nothing was different. And again, we still have top over here showing us, you know, what we're doing. Let me turn on the actual multiple CPU view top. Now, the real changes begin when we start doing things like moving windows. And of course, most people are familiar with the wobble effect, and most people like to show it by, you know, doing crazy things like this. And that's not really where wobble begins to show its power. Instead, it's when you're just doing, you know, minor moving of things. You know, just putting things in a slightly different location. It seems to give them a real sense of motion. Rather than just being a static box or triangle we're moving around our desktop, it really feels like these pieces are, of our desktop know where they're going. And so, while most people would think, oh, you know, what's the point? Who cares about that? It, it is a nice visual touch, and I have found myself actually rather liking it. And you can actually see, if you look right up here by the Dig um, logo, you'll see the transparency I was talking about as well in the window titles. If I move this here, you should be able to see it as well. You can kind of see that WebEx advertisement kind of showing through a little bit there as well. So, now, the last time we were here, of course, when I would switch virtual desktops, it would just very starkly, you know, switch screens. But now, changes it up a little bit. Everything's mapped to a cube, and this cube can be more than four sides, but at the time we just have the stock four. And as you flip through it, you get this nice preview as you're flipping through. Now, 
again, most people would say, oh, you know, yes, that does look nice and all, but is there any practicality to it? Well, if you're trying to find a certain window, doing this, you actually get a little bit of a preview as you move. And so it actually does make it quite nice for seeing what's going on on a given window while you're moving. Now, you can do more than just the keyboard shortcuts, of course. If you want a little more control over it, you just use your mouse instead, and we can kind of rotate around. And you'll notice that what's really nice is if you see the movie there in the right-hand side, it continues to play as we rotate around. So if that game of uh, Tetris, or sorry, uh, Genometris <laughs> was running, of course, we'd be seeing that as well. So all your animations, and the top is still updating itself, as you can see right there in the window, and you see our, where's our perform performance monitor there is still showing our CPU and network and memory utilization as it goes in real time. So right now, in fact, here, let's go and get the movie started playing there, so we have a little something more to see as we go. But so it's a very nice, clean way to rotate around through your virtual desktops, and of course it's blank on top there. You can put an image up there to make it as pretty as you like, um, but in general, it's a very clean, nice way to switch. Now something I wanted to point out was a lot of people had questions of whether there was going to be a lot of CPU utilization, you know, in light of doing this. What you'll notice up here in the top left-hand corner, let me actually bring this down into the center view a little bit more, this blue line, these two blue lines on the top here are the CPU utilization. Both of them right now are sitting at about fifth, or they go about five to ten percent. They'll spike up to around fifteen or so. It's mostly because the DVD is playing at the moment. But you'll see it's nice and flat. Even when we come in here and you know wiggle the windows around and move them back and forth, for the most part, it stays nice and flat. Come in here and do some flipping through again. We have there's the DreamWorks logo as the movie gets started. We can even flip really fast. Again, you'll notice, nice and flat. It's doing a really great job of offloading all of this work to the GPU to help make sure your CPU or CPUs, if you have a dual core machine, are you know open and ready to do whatever you want. Now, unfortunately, that's not always the case. Uh, there does seem to be one instance where things don't go as smoothly as they should. It's in a resize. So let me take this Firefox window here. We have Nintendofi.com open. Come in here and resize the window some. You'll notice the resizing is a little choppy. It's, it's not as smooth as, as it would have been without XGL and comps running. And of course, you'll also notice right up here, our CPU graph, while we're doing it, is spiking up quite a bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is. I don't know if it's because there's a lot of repaint commands being issued to it or what, but for whatever reason, it does seem that resizes cause a CPU spike when using comps and XGL. Otherwise, it does a really good job of offloading all the work you know, um, and making sure that your GPU is the one really busy. I mean, we can even come in here and, you know, get some really high resolution video. And you can see my window, obviously, there in the background. Sorry about that glare. But even as, you know, even in this, still quite happily going to shrink this down again a bit. You know, even while we're wobbling it, it does the deformations on the, uh, the movie in real time and really doesn't seem to have any problems whatsoever with it. The resizing again there got choppy and I would assume that's due to the same thing and here we go we can actually bring it inside of you here and you can see that while the movie's playing and everything CPU utilization still sticking right about there. In fact if I kill this movie off you see our CPU utilization drops down nicely there we give it a moment. There we go. It's dropping down into the single digits again. So, uh, in general, the more useful features of comps and XGL, of course, are more like the water effects and the mouse trail effects and things like that that add some visual um, prettiness to your uh, desktop, but not necessarily a whole lot in forms of functionality. Um, but the functional features, like the wobble, um, like the desktop switcher, uh, some of the transparencies, uh, I didn't demo zoom, but you can do zooming as well. Those features, they, they are fast, they're stable, they use your GPU really well rather than offloading the work onto your CPU, and they do, in my opinion, really add something to the experience and make it a little bit more of a pleasant time using your desktop. So in general, I've been very, very impressed. The installation of Ubuntu was very easy. The installation of Comps and XGL, there's some really great guides out there that make it pretty darn straightforward. Um, and again, on the right hardware, it works really well. I'm really impressed, and I intend to continue using it for quite a while. 
I'm going to come back a little bit later and I'm going to give you a, a demo of all of this with all of the pretty features turned on to really show you some of the wacky and weird stuff that you can do with XGL and comps on your desktop. So enjoy. I hope you've liked this little preview.